Okay, so hola, hello. Hi. Uh, I'm really glad that you are joining for my presentation and summarize uh, this time of Nidavata. Uh, my name is Patricia. I'm an uh, artist based in uh, Krakow. I'm living in Poland. Uh, I'm most the visual artist and intermediate artist. So I focusing more with working with the different contexts, like uh, technology context and traditional media context, or interdisciplinary role to the art and some maybe inspiration cycle. So uh, today I want to invite you to, to listen about the project which I made before coming for a residency, but it was still developed and, uh, uh, and I also try to uh, introduce you some of my context of uh, like an idea and conceptions about my artistic uh, area. Uh, so that, uh, in a few moments I will explain more precisely what is in contact with that, but that like the title for the project, which is based on, on the individual drawing and meditation sessions. Uh, that are some more performative because of the interactive part. So uh, uh, the main concepts and concepts and inspiration for my artist's practice is uh, looking for some space of for the coexistence of the creative computing and uh, human creativity. So it was my, uh, it is my, like the definition for that space, that uh, kind of manifestation, maybe of some post-biological life and uh, uh, looking for explanation, what could be kind of mechanical to it uh, in, my, in my process. Uh, for a human and machine creative uh, coexistence together. So it was also the main concept for my uh, PhD thesis, which I defend in this uh, year in February. Uh, and uh, this project, the deck, it was the um, previous uh, research for that longer, longer PhD project. Uh, so, Computational creativity could be also known as a mechanical creativity or creative computing. And uh, my research is oscillate around uh, uh, this uh, perspective of machine creative process and how the human uh, knowledge can influence and develop this uh, machine mechanical creativity and how the uh, computer creativity can maybe support a uh, human process. So it's like a, something like a loop of you know, inspiration. Uh, but I also based, uh, in my artistic way, I also based on the, on the meta-creation concept, which is more, it's coming more from the uh, context of generative art. Uh, what, it, what it exactly could mean uh, meta creation? Uh, to, for me, the most uh, easiest way to explain uh, what meta creation is uh, it is the way of making an artwork where the artist is the author who is create an uh, artwork like, like a kind of the system, which is a first layer of this process. And the second uh, step uh, is to run this system to create the next artifacts, for example, drawings or some music. So this, this system which, which is producing the artifacts is the second layer of, the, uh, of this creation. So uh, for example, for installation from the 2016, which uh, was made with the cooperation with Mariusz Trump, uh, and I uh, and it's a good illus 
situation for the system which could be part of this manipulation and concept. So, uh, mechanical relationships is an installation which is uh, uh, made with the two main parts. First part is a uh, black box. It, uh, it's making uh, is a kind of a camera obscura dark room, uh, which the photosensitive paper inside and uh, that part here is a, is a robotic arm which is, uh, exposed the uh, photographic paper uh, using the LED light but uh, the way how this robot is working uh, is controlled by all the all the modules uh, outside the black box so the uh, these modules are uh, movable, they are connected, and they uh, linking each other and changing dynamics and directions and movements. So uh, we use in this installation one of the sensors, uh, which is uh, reading the data about this uh, dynamics in the uh, whole body of the installation, and this. Uh, Data is processed this, by this robot arm, which is exactly inside this black box, to produce a, a photographics at the end. Because this paper is developed in the traditional uh, photography methods, like developed uh, by me in the dark room. Uh, so at the end, from this exposition time and uh, time-based um, process. Uh, we made uh, some first series uh, of prints. One of the prints uh, looks, for example, like that. So this, all of these lines, there are uh, each layer, they are exposed by the that light inside this uh, For the better illustration, I will show you the short process how these uh, modules are moving a short translation uh, mechanical relationship like they told before that. for the marking this topic and it's also an uh, important background for me 
in this uh, method of work is observing machine learning process and how these uh, methods can be used in this uh, computational creativity but in the field of the new media art and gener generated artwork. So uh, it's uh, like a more like cultural context. So for closing this part about the backgrounds um, and some concepts, uh, we are moving now slowly to this main topic, which is a deck. A deck in a, in a oh, sorry. In a translation for the English, it could only mean a breath or some air being drawn into and pushed out of the lungs, or drawing in air into the lungs and letting it out, or a breath, a gas. But it is a, some core of the old Polish word deck, which we are using uh, here, for example, in the, in the Polish word deck, it is an inhalation and Videk exhalation. Uh, so I use this core, uh, which is not so common now in the normal language, but I just it for a uh, title for this project. Uh, so the uh, main inspiration for uh, looking in this, in this breathing area, it was my own practice uh, on some way of Shivananda yoga practice. It was a experience with then the mo most, uh, mostly about the, how the breathing methods are influenced by body and mind and emotions. Uh, and I start to looking more in this meditation based on the breath, uh, working with this uh, sense, sensation from the body and the mental states. So I uh, also this uh, aspect of uh, breathing in, breathing out, it could be like uh, some metaphor of exchange uh, and connection uh, between us and not only a human beings, but the whole world. So it's like uh, interhuman, interspecies uh, exchange. Mm. So uh, now, uh, um, projects have a main method, which I uh, start develop in Krakow, but I continue here in Lisbon, in a local context. So DEC is a biofeedback installation, uh, which is a system which contains uh, this more, how I can call it, a human and algorithmic generative layers. Uh, and the main rule uh, which, is, which is avoiding uh, feedback between uh, human and algorithm uh, coexistence. So it's a loop of uh, reading, uh, the loop of reading data, processing data uh, from the human side, but also from the uh, electron beam side. Uh, so. Uh, for the participants, uh, they have the uh, time and they can catch how to link their graph data to some algorithmic uh, create digital graph. Uh, so, uh, for illustration, I use some pictures mostly from my time here in Lisbon, uh, which I made. Uh, participants and uh, they took the part of the uh, performance installation time, which was an individual session, session, session. So uh, I, offer, uh, I offer for uh, people uh, to take this uh, exercise, which I explain more how it's working this exercise. But this exercise is like a trigger to run the into more intuitive gestures and more intuitive creative process of the body. Uh, mostly based on, on the drawing process. Uh, so what's something more about the human layer? Uh, the human being in the meditation drawing experience. Uh, the, mm, on my way for looking of, uh, of this uh, mindfulness meditation 
process, I found some instruction uh, from the books of Wendy and Greenhall uh, about them work about the book about the mindfulness and uh, the art of drawing like a great cloud of awareness. And uh, I mostly based on this instruction. First, I started from my own practice. Uh, so, how this exercise is working? Uh, it's taking around uh, 20 minutes to take apart, and the first uh, 10 minutes uh, is uh, guided uh, meditation, more mostly is the relaxation uh, with the focusing of the breathing. Uh, and uh, observing the uh, sensation from the uh, body uh, with the eyes uh, closed. The second part uh, uh, of this picture here, uh, this is an illustration from the studio, which I took apart from, for the residency, and uh, it's a prepared uh, place for taking a seat and uh, starting this relaxation process uh, with the eyes closed. And, uh, there is uh, some examples uh, part of exercise uh, uh, which is a guiding uh, by the using the headphones uh, and recordings. So it's a mostly focused about uh, touching so uh, rhythm, how your chest is moving, uh, how you feel your breath for example your legs and how does it feel like to do it just like that and, uh, and in the second part in the next around 10 minutes of drawing process so this instruction they are more for an invite for uh, imagining that you can uh, your arm is more controlled by the breathing grip uh, and uh, mostly you can free your hands <laughs> in that point uh, of work. Uh, so there are also, I want to show you my first experience with this exercise. It was in the pandemic time in 2021 when I uh, arranged some studio in my, in my house to take a part for this exercise. So the first uh, influence by first observation and I start wondering maybe how I can uh, touch some digital data so for the moment I will run you my my own session About this chart, I will explain something you know, in a few minutes. What is exactly a meaning?
about this taking this uh, data from the virus. I figure out that the best uh, solution for me is uh, it was to uh, use a belt, respiratory belt, which was uh, manufactured by the, some company who is the support the high school education. And uh, these sensors, which I also bring here, and I will show you on my body how it's working you can also try if you want after after the presentation so uh, each time i'm putting the sensor on the chest or on the heart area mm -hmm. i prepared everything before so it should, it should work okay. i hope and I support this part on the neck. So what are you see on the screen is the sensor. It is a, it's a reacting of my chest movement. So when I mention a breathing, in, I will show you on the on the real time situation. Start with the collecting data. I'm making a breathing and stop breathing for a moment, breathe out. So the first chart here is showing how exactly my chest is the press on this on the top. And it's showing the first chart. The second chart is a prediction from the algorithm how should we change maybe in, ten, in each 10 seconds it's predicting my mm, average breath per minute so it's a counting we need a more time to predict it more now I'm speaking so probably it is predicted that it will be more uh, breath per minute so it's a base uh, in my my uh, main method is for a measurement is using it is using in this installation is using a sensor which is a collecting these numbers of these numbers there is a force it's called a force in my brain it's collecting by newtons uh, and uh, I also have the markers about the time measuring it so. Uh, I make a short break to run this laser composition again. I will tell you more about the slide soon. Uh, but what about this data? So I'm collecting this data, and uh, this is the first step to generate and build some digital job, uh, which is generated from the uh, script, uh, uh, processing script, and wh why I mention this to the digital job? Uh, it is a kind of um, individual geometric portrait in a digital job, like interpretation. So for that, I made a script, which is uh, processing this whole information from the sensor, and translate this data into some uh, circles and elliptic shapes uh, so we're drawing and uh, uh, changing the shapes and uh, weight and transparency depends of the measurement is complex so there is may maybe more uh, technical part but basically for example some examples from this script uh, if I want to generate some stroke weights, I'm using some function which is taking the force of my grip and uh, multiply this force by some generate noise and so on. I'm making some line transparency which, which is in mapping the force to the uh, different percent of transparency of the line. Uh, the color of the line is a, is a white but in, in the different transparency. Uh, and I also took in the 
three per minute mm, number, uh, which is uh, giving me in uh, each 10 seconds of session measurements. Uh, and it's this uh, three per minute numbers is a uh, is a translate to changing the height and height of the elliptic shape in the composition. So all of these rules uh, uh, I tested for making the final uh, composition. But before I choose that I will start using the ellipse, ellipse shape, shape and the circle shape, I also test some test. I made the test with the different shapes, with the different styles of uh, uh, transformation of the digital, uh, digital image. So I want to share just for you some examples that how it could be looks also. It depends on the style of the transformation. That one I choose for uh, next uh, steps for this work, the next report. So, yeah, I can take out the session right now. <laughs> and after my individual sessions and um, process, I start to invite some uh, people who are taking uh, part of this exercise. And the first uh, cycle was made in Krakow in 2021. Sorry, 21, 2021. Uh, it took uh, 13 or participants. Uh, each of the person has uh, uh, the same space for making the drawing. Uh, uh, the paper the size one per one meter in the wall of 10 meter, um, 10 meter wallpaper. And I start collecting uh, data from this first cycle. Um, here I want to show you the one example from the Mariana, Mariana Zabawa from Krakow. Uh, this is a beginning for the session, uh, some pictures during. She was more with the background of the dance, so her body um, starts to more uh, flow with all of this uh, drawing uh, exercise. This is a, a final uh, hand drawing pictures. There are two charts from her, exactly her session. is a chart about the force, uh, uh, about the breath in the old session. And this chart is about the change of this other breath for me. Uh, so finally, uh, the, this, uh, all the data from her body was a processing to produce a graphic. And it's a final graph for her session. 
and this movie here show the uh, all steps, not no 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 all steps, but the uh, in the faster way, the, like a full view of all the stages of the generation. Yeah. During uh, sessions, taking uh, is changing and much more slower, but for this uh, review of movie. This is like all the circles are a separate threads. Yes, there is separate mm -hmm. yeah. measurements. Mm -hmm. Thread. show you two final gallery, uh, the cycle of the from Krakow, this each graph is from the each person sessions, so there are uh, uh, final graphics person. Because from Lisbon I'm still processing everything, yeah, of course. but there is a gallery from the uh, Imagine that is a one per, per one meter size. <laughs> that was, was very interesting because the um, man who takes a part, he thought that he's drawing on the, mm -hmm. the paper all the time, but he's drawing on the air, <laughs> just touching the paper from, from time to time. <laughs> But it was also interesting, it's also like it's very thin, nothing is not normal.
still in the working process, but maybe I will show you some examples of this recordings and the sessions here exactly. which was generated based on this session. here on the place with this laser projection. So what you are seeing here now uh, is a projection based on the records of the one of the sessions. Uh, exactly, it was an Elizabeth session. <laughs> so for now we are seeing the raw data of about her breath, how it's changing, how it's changing during the session. Uh, when she made a breathe in, the light is going white. When she made a breathe out, the light is going white. So this record is taking around 80 minutes each. And uh, each, uh, each session could be also projected on the, on the projector. Also in real time, when somebody is taking a session, for example, upstairs in the studio, we also control this laser production here. Uh, so there is a, like a second output and uh, it's a 
to come out with in the idea of this generated are if we work in the processing the information in the human body. Yeah. And something more, I think we can go to question. If you want to contact me, I do my email, I don't know, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for the beautiful presentation of this year. One thing that was particularly interesting for me, having experience being in, in the session myself, was how did you uh, manage to strike a balance between uh, a human input and uh, the code itself, how it plays out, what role it plays in, in the session, the the mechanisms that output the graphics all of these different parts seem to be very well balanced and i especially enjoyed how uh, after immediately after the session i could see these graphics mm -hmm. and the data transform uh, but my question was uh, finding that balance and that equilibrium uh, that process itself was it something that you uh, intuitively tuned throughout the uh, construction of this uh, piece, or was it something that you presupposed? So, that I think that both, both, okay. because my idea was to take care about being out and in technology in this process. First, inspiration was from the only from the body sensation, and I still. I'm working like that, I like to be out of uh, digital inputs, you know, if I can, um, somehow. And uh, I also enjoy to learning something new technology or observing uh, new methods or what's going to happen in our world. So this balance, it was uh, like a more uh, way of working and also intuition to to be somewhere between like in, a, in, a, in this more interdisciplinary way of thinking and working mm -hmm. and so uh, yes I planned this a bit but I also take into control about this so both in both ways the other question is your relationship with data mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because also one of the conversations with you you mentioned this idea of co-authorship together with the code and the robotics and the person whose data is, uh, is being managed uh, but in a sense it's the algorithm itself that we're feeding so uh, in in the opposite way, through that's more of a more of a your own idea about it. But how does this algorithmic approach feeds back uh, into the the human uh, sensations? Because listening to the audio recording, it was also uh, a human voice mm -hmm. uh, following us through through the process. Mm -hmm. So. In a sense, uh, the feeding of the algorithm comes one way. So maybe you have a, 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 a thought about it, or maybe you have uh, a thing that you were thinking about. Uh, you mean about a more uh, like a closed circle of some interaction? Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that, uh, yeah. First, because on the first layer, when yeah. you are sitting, yeah. you are starting the processing like a human being. Yeah. Yeah. You listen instruction and you make the first interpretation of your human mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we have the second layer which is that I send it to the computer. But uh, uh, it's a good question about maybe this feedback loop. Yeah? Mm -hmm. what, uh, if I understand yeah. you correctly. Yeah. This feedback loop about the inspiration like a conversation uh, one of the answers is of course this digital interpretation yeah. uh, job just to be an answer 
the one of this also could be an answer. I just I I wonder now, but this is still open process that uh, to analyze these recordings from camera using this machine learning algorithm. So maybe when I use some model to analyze some precise question or way of uh, human movements or human way of uh, drawings, it could be more. Uh, wider as well from the algorithm, yeah? yeah. But, uh, uh, but it's still like an open process for now, for me. So this, uh, I have a feeling that there are different levels of interaction. First is also like you are going into this uh, exercise, you have a more like a in, inner interaction with your body. Yeah. The one of them. And the second, if we are tweeting, that is a, okay, it's a really keep of it. Yeah. But if we are treating like a consciousness being, like something that is a processing data on it, yeah. like we are processing data, and this computer is processing data, and we can say maybe that I have a, I'm in consciousness of my being, but maybe this computer and all of these processing algorithms, they also are consciousness or are they more like a digital beings. And it's a very important question, how we can uh, communicate, like in a diff with the different species. Like how I can communicate, for example, with my dog. Yeah. Yeah. We are still developing this skill. Yeah. We have some intuition, we know, we feeling that uh, we understand each other. But it is also this, this uh, mm, uh, maybe uh, the question that we are putting too much our human, uh, let's say, human uh, behaviors, maybe to the animals or to the electronics uh, stuff. We still we trying to looking for a human. It's something which I still uh, developing, observing, and it's not nothing. It's, it's not a question with the one answer, okay? Yeah? Like yeah. one clear answer. Thank you. Yeah, I think that uh, this uh, kind of um, this, especially the, the thing that you're saying that we shouldn't look like this in a way until for more. Yeah, until for more. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of it's an answer. It's kind of hard to. Uh, overcome that, mm -hmm. or uh, it can be hard to overcome. Um, and there was something else that I was curious about, with, but exactly the way that you told me about uh, this relationship that formed. Uh, I personally have experienced that mm -hmm. through, through the through the entire process because uh, it's hard to conceptualize ourselves as. Uh, cognitive machines, unless we're put into a position where we are following the orders or a script ourselves. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was the meditation. So, by the end of it, I personally felt like I was uh, a tool mm -hmm. equal to the tools that are, were outputting the visuals that we see here, or the laser. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt that. In a sense, I felt that equality between the human and the machine as a whole. So that was a very interesting experience. I think it uh, also it was very important for me to get, uh, to get this opportunity to come back more to your body sensation, just to start from that. Because I think that in this moment where we are also living, you know, in our times, uh, we are mostly overloaded and uh, to figure out how we want to still develop this all digital scripts it's also important to bring sometimes in my opinion bring sometimes coming back more to our body and for me maybe not a question but also uh, like I took also part in the process project and 
for me what was really interesting that another senses was working like mm -hmm. with my eyes closed I could completely focus on the breath but through my hands and movement like it's very as you say we are so overstimulated in mm -hmm. everyday life this, this time especially with our eyes mm -hmm. and like screens and everything mm -hmm. so for me it was very interesting but at the same time very I don't know, liberating, that I was able to express myself mm -hmm. with my eyes closed and through the movement of my breath, but through my whole body. So that was really, really inspiring, mm -hmm. inspiring for me and very interesting uh, experience at the same time. And also about this, uh, we are a corporate to make this piece of uh, the installation or generated output. Because yeah. I'm not feeling only the one outdoor, all of this output mm -hmm. and it's also nice for me to share this graphics or this uh, recorded data with the audience for a share this inspiration. As I say, we are all kind of uh, like artists in it itself. Mm -hmm. It's of like course. a group project. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. And it's amazing for me how different they are, how, like, really, like, they have some mm, similar, like, let's say, yeah. riff, but mm -hmm. they are all very unique. They are. I'm not, I'm not changing anything in the script yeah. uh, between the Krakow and, uh, and this session here, and they are different. And why did you decide to use this kind of elliptic shapes as a way of, like, the aesthetic thing? Like, why was this an aesthetic choice in comparison to all the other uh, yes, I, For me, it was maybe more my personal choice to develop this style, but for me, a, a circle is just a symbol of the life circles, of breathing in, breathing out, and it's something uh, repeated. So just why one of the reasons. I, uh, if you are more interested about the following this project, I also develop, I try to update the, the website for this digital collection of the sessions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Maybe five minutes, Paul. Yes. Yes.